I begin with excerpt number 12 life cycles and conditionings excerpt from how to rear a child human body moves in seven year cycles life moves in seven year cycles just as earth makes one rotation on its axis in 24 hours now nobody knows why not 25 why not 23 there is no way to answer it it is simply a fact the earth takes 365 days to make a round of the sun why only 365 again nobody knows and also nobody needs to know there are certain things that are to be taken for granted we are not interested in hows and whys we simply try to fit in in that framework again nobody knows and also nobody needs to know and it does not make any difference either if it were taking 400 days what difference would it make to you or even 300 days nothing really matters the question would have remained the same therefore remember one thing any question is absurd if with every answer the question is still remains standing the same if suppose today the earth was taking 25 hours to move on its axis the question would come why not 25 and if it is 25 then why not 26 so therefore remember one thing any question is absurd if with every answer the question is still remains standing the same in 24 hours the earth makes one turn on its axis why not make it 25 or 26 or 36 as much as you want but in each case the question is still it stands the same have you ever thought why hence I call any question absurd because it will remain the same always staring at you in many ways rephrased earlier I told you that human life moves in seven year cycles but do not ask me why life moves in seven year cycles I do not know this much I know that life moves in seven year cycles and this is important to me and if you really understand those seven year cycles you will understand a great deal about human growth as well the first seven years are the most important because the foundation of life is being laid during these years that is why all the religions are very much concerned about gripping children as quickly as possible it is so that they can start manipulating them at an early age and once this happens the natural growth of the child is destroyed the Jews will circumcise the child what nonsense but they are stamping the child as a Jew it is a primitive way of stamping you still do it on the cattle in India and I have seen stamps on the animals even owner stamps the cattle otherwise they can get mixed up it is exactly like the number plates of the automobile it is a cruel thing red hot steel has to be used to stamp the cattle's leather skin it burns the skin 
but it becomes your possession it cannot be lost or stolen what is circumcision it is like stamping cattle but these cattle are jew hindus have their own way all religions have their own way of manipulating the children but it should be known whose cattle you are who your shepherd is jesus moses mohammed you are not your own master you are not your own shepherd those first 7 years are the years when you are conditioned and stuffed with all kind of ideas which go on haunting you for rest of the life and then this will go on distracting you from your potentiality it will corrupt you and will never allow you to see clearly they will always come like clouds before your eyes and will make everything confused and blurred things are clear very clear and existence is absolutely clear but your eyes have layers upon layers of dust and all that dust has been arranged in the first 7 years of your life all these are and all the dust has been arranged in the first 7 years of your life when you were so innocent and trusting that whatever was told you accepted as truth and whatever has gone into your foundation later on it will be very difficult for you to find it has become almost part of your blood bones and your very marrow you will ask a thousand other questions but you will never ask about the basic foundation of your belief the first expression of love towards the child is to leave his first 7 years absolutely innocent unconditioned to leave him for 7 years completely wild and a pagan he should not be converted to hinduism to mohammedanism or to christianity anybody who is trying to convert the child is not compassionate instead he is cruel he is contaminating the very soul of a new fresh arrival before the child has even asked questions he has been answered with ready made philosophies dogmas ideologies and thus with all kind of nonsense in the name of culture and religion this is a very strange situation the child has not asked about god and you go on teaching him about god why so much impatience we let him ask first and when he asks then assist him to explore on his own this is the we remember the first 7 years are very precious in the life of a child leave him pagan leave him totally wild just shower and share your love with the child this will allow the potentiality of the child to grow he will explore on his own except 13 what is my religion what is my religion if the child some day shows interest in god and starts asking about god then try to tell him not only your idea of god because nobody has any monopoly 
put before him all the ideas of God that have been presented to different people by different ages, by different religions, cultures and civilizations. This is the basic question that each child is bound to ask one day. What is the basic question? What is my religion? And this is the beginning of self-inquiry. This is the beginning of a new life, life of awareness. Only a man of awareness and deep understanding of life can, through his energy field, nourish the consciousness of a child. I repeat this. This is the beginning of a new life, life of awareness. Only a man of awareness and deep understanding of life can, through his energy field, nourish the consciousness of a child. I recall an incident from my life. I would have been below 10 or so. One day I inquired from my grandmother, the Sufi master, what is my religion? The basic question. Allow the child to ask this question. What is my religion? She could have given me a ready-made answer. You are born in a Hindu family, so your religion is Hinduism. Or you belong to Nakshbandi Sufi tradition. Your religion is Sufism. But she did not say any such thing. Instead, she sowed the seed of awakening in me. She told me, your religion is the same as that of God. This reply created an insatiable quest and awe in me. Oh, my religion is the same as that of God? Isn't it wonder and awe? If you tell a child, look the glitter into his eyes. Oh, my religion is the same as that of God? I am like God, there is a glitter in his eyes. Observe that. This created an insatiable quest and awe in me. Therefore I further asked her, if my religion is the same as that of God, then what is the religion of God? You are bound to ask. This question is coming out of innocence and when questions arise out of innocence and answers are given out of awareness, not manipulation, a totally different kind of life journey begins. She looked at me, asked and replied, you ask too many questions. This you will have to discover yourself. There was depth in her eyes when she answered. You can drown, one can drown very easily in that unfathomable depth in her eyes when she said, you ask too many questions. This you have to discover yourself. Had you been there in place of my grandmother, you would have been quick enough to stuff the information in me instead of allowing me to begin self-inquiry. This is what we call training. This is what we call rearing a child. Every parent and your so-called priests, the religious custodians, are eager to stuff the child with ready-made answers before understanding dawns. Because there is a fear. If the child grows and begins his self-inquiry, you will not be able to command the child. 
you will not be able to manipulate the child child will attain to the heights that are beyond the reach of these so called custodians of the religion if the child one day shows interest in god and starts asking about god then try to tell him not only your idea of god because your idea of god has been conditioned a hindu can only give an idea of god according to his understanding a christian can give an idea about the denomination to which he belongs so is the case with hinduism and islam you do not have a broader perspective about god nobody has any monopoly put before him all the ideas of god and tell him you are free to choose between these whichever appeals to you or you can invent on your own if nothing suits if everything seems to be with a flaw and you think you can have a better idea then invent on your own or if you find that there is no way to invent an idea without loopholes then drop the whole thing there is no need a man can live without god there is no intrinsic necessity similar answers can be given about all other questions that life seeks each moment i recall another incident i was then studying in bsc i was not interested either in being a doctor or an engineer or any other professionalism i was interested in studying only language literature economics sociology philosophy and psychology but my father would not allow me these subjects three precious years of my university life was wasted out of the insistence of my father i failed a third time in bsc then my uncle sufi sheik onkar nath razila taala unu sent me a composition in a letter the couplet was in urdu language that meant each time when spring comes trees get bare as leaves turn gold before falling during the entire winter season the tree remains bare one may feel this to be wrong and lament seeing the trees this way bare indeed such is the way of existence unique and mystical remember existence does no wrong millions of people have lived without god god is nothing that is inevitably needed by you yes i have my ideas that too is in the combination of all these ideas in this collection you can choose that but i am not saying that my idea is the right one it appeals to me it worked for me it may not appeal to you there is no inner necessity that son should agree with the father in fact it seems far better that he should not agree that is how evolution happens if the child agrees with the father then there will be no evolution because father will agree with his own father so everybody will be there where god left adam and eve naked outside the gate of the garden of eden everybody will be there 
because sons have disagreed with their fathers, forefathers, with their whole tradition, man has evolved. This is the way that one can rear the child and the process of evolution will continue. Remember, the evolution happens when there is total disagreement with the past. If you continue to agree with the past, then you are following the past. And the evolution is to take place now and here. This is the way to rear the child. The next excerpt is evolution total disagreement with the past. All these so-called complainers have to understand that if a child does not make mischief, then who else will do? And mischief is the way of child's natural growth and life. Indeed, the process of evolution is total disagreement with the past. The more intelligent you are, the more you are going to disagree. Remember only non-intelligent and stupid people agree. If you are intelligent, you have your own understanding, you will not accept the words as it is. The more intelligent you are, the more you are going to disagree. But parents appreciate the child who agrees. They condemn the child who disagrees. This is the practice in most of the families to show such resentment and to condemn children in front of everybody. Any visitor to the family and the child is called and the child knows for what. So by and by he learns to enjoy the entire process. Each time a guest or the priest or the teacher comes, he is called to be condemned. It is said this boy is in disagreement with everything. He has his brain upside down. This is what happens in most of the families in the name of child rearing. It is true, but the reality is each child looks upside down to the parents, the society and the people around. Imagine when you were gro growing up, did you actually agree with all the things that had been told to you by your parents, by your teachers, by your priests, but you have to agree because that is the way of tradition. It is true, but the reality is a child looks upside down to the parents, the society and the people around. I recall an incident again. I was a graduate student and I asked one of my young cousins, why do you do so much mischief that everyone has to complain. His reply was the outcome of creativity and eye-opener for parents. He replied, all these so-called complainers have to understand that if a child does not make mischief, then who else will do? And mischief is the way of a child's natural growth. The parents are standing on their heads doing headstand posture while the child is simply standing on his feet. Indeed, an intelligent child is the only one who does not believe in any kind of nonsense and fairy tales. I recall another incident. One day my five-year-old nephew asked his father, Daddy, how is a child born? 
The father did not know the answer to the question of the child, how to satiate the child's quest and answer him. The child was very intelligent. Therefore, no ordinary answer could satisfy him and also because of the age, a scientific answer has to be given that the child would understand. Immediately I called the four-year-old child and spoke. I thought to find the answer in the child's own way. So I asked, what subjects do you like the most in your school? The answer was agriculture. This was enough a clue. I further inquired the procedure of agriculture. He explained the entire procedure. First the soil is prepared, then the seed is planted in the soil, the flower pot is put in the sun, watered and cared regularly, then the seed sprouts and so on and so on. This the child explained very well. I used this analogy to explain the child birth. I told him, the mummy has the soil in the pot, the mummy has the soil in the flower pot, and daddy brings the seed that is planted in the soil, just as you do in your class. Then it is taken care of, and when the seed is ready to grow, First it grows under the ground and then above the ground. The process of seed growing above the ground is how a child is born. This answer satisfied the child at that age. Indeed, this is the usual procedure in every home. No parent answers the questions of the children out of awareness. Instead, they only answer out of their past conditionings and go on con condemning the disagreement of the children as spoiled and astray. Now this is inhuman. If you answer the questions out of your deep understanding and still the child disagrees, only then he is stubborn. But have you answered a single question of the child? Have you ever satisfied any child with your answers? What right do you have then to condemn the child because he disagrees? In India, at the beginning of the winter season, there is a festival of lights called Diwali, which is celebrated worldwide among the Hindu communities and here in Trinidad as well. It is during this period when the whole country becomes very festive and every house has thousands of small lamps decorating all the walls, balconies and the surrounding. Not only the town becomes a fairy land, instead the entire country turns into a fairy land with firecrackers and great rejoicing. That day they worship money as part of religious tradition. The goddess of money or prosperity is Lakshmi. Lakshmi is the wife of the Hindu god Narayan and of course a god's wife should be the goddess of wealth. In fact one of the Indian words for god Ishwar means one who has all the wealth of the world. His wife is the goddess of wealth. And on the night of the festival of lights, they worship money in the form of the goddess. Before paper currency came into being, they used to make a pile of silver coins and worship them. Now they put paper money and worship it. Before silver coins, there were gold coins coins and the word rupee simply means gold as it comes from the Sanskrit language. It is an Indian word because in the beginning the coin was minted in pure gold. So the word rupiah 
which became an English rupee was meaningful. They used to worship gold and then came silver and finally the silver coin was followed by the paper currency. Traditionally, they go on worshipping money generation after generation without anyone questioning this. Basically, this was the question of worshipping the money in the form of the symbol of the goddess Lakshmi. I never participated in this worship because the whole idea of worshipping money in any form, be it as the form of goddess or anything else was ugly. All these smugglers do worship money. I told them this is one of the ugliest things one can do. Money is something to be used, not worship. On one hand, your religions teach that money is nothing but dust. And on the other hand, it becomes a goddess to be worshipped. And you cannot see the split mind. On one hand, you praise a man as a sage if he renounces the money. By renouncing the money, etc., he becomes synonymous with God because he renounced money and everything. And on the other hand, you go on worshipping money. There is no way to make the intelligence understand this. Certainly, this is a clear-cut contradiction. My argument was if money is God's wife, Lakshmi, then in the first place the person who renounces God's wife is criminal. And also why should he possess someone else's wife? Indeed this is absolutely illegal. He should be caught and imprisoned for possessing somebody else's wife. This is what the law does. I never agreed with anything unless I was convinced from within. Hindus throw water each morning facing the sun. And this is part of regular Hindu worship and no one understands the reason. Nothing really begins without an understanding. And with the passage of time the understanding is lost and we carry empty rituals in our hands. It is said that by taking a bath in the holy Ganges all sins are washed. This did not appeal to my intelligence as a child. Sins are committed by the mind and its understanding. Body followed the mind and sin happened. Body can be washed with water but not the mind. Body can be washed with water but not the mind and its understanding. That will require a deeper understanding and transformation. What really happens is scientific. Walking on the earth you are charged with earth's magnetic energy and you remain influenced by its gravitational force. You accumulate this magnetic charge. This force continues to pull you down towards the earth and you cannot enter the inner realm. Sometimes such energy field hinders your health both physical and spiritual as well. Now the alternate medicines are also understanding and explaining that the earth's gravitational force is the cause of sickness as well. Beyond the gravitational pull of the earth, there is a pull of heaven or grace. The earth's pull is to be nullified, to be within the heavenly pull of grace. This is exactly like the space shuttle nullifying the earth's gravitational force to enter the space, a new realm. This heavenly pull is essential for inward growth. Through meditation, gravitational force is nullified and your inward pull or the upward movement begins. Therefore, when you take a bath in the river or the sea, you are re relieved 
refreshed of the earth's energy field and that you have accumulated because when you are in this river or the sea you can float because of the principle of buoyancy there you are beyond the gravitational pull of the earth and if you can be free of the gravitational pull of the earth even for a little while you will feel refreshed man feels burdened man feels stressed out not because of other things but because of the gravitational pull and the magnetic charge that he carries with him when you are in the ocean or the river it is because of the principle of buoyancy that you float and when you are floating the gravitational pull of the earth becomes nullified there you are beyond the gravitational pull of earth and you feel refreshed no one has ever thought why do you feel going to the ocean or the river you feel refreshed you take a bath in the ocean you take a bath in your bathroom but when you take a bath in your bathroom you never feel refreshed and even if you feel refreshed it is very insignificant refreshing but when you take a bath in the river or the ocean you feel very refreshed if the two forces only nullify one another you will be in a spiritual limbo such situation is very difficult to come out from the state when the heavenly pull of grace far exceeds the gravitational pull of earth you levitate this is natural that meditator feels you cannot force this upon anyone this you can see happening to the astronauts in the space but your so called charlatan gurus teach you levitation as a spiritual process just all holy kaudam and nothing else is this if the space shuttle does not gather enough energy force it cannot enter the space crossing the earth's energy field this is very scientific because of human imbecility and ignorance the spiritual scientists give it a religious texture but this made man simply ritualistic and totally incapable of exploring the deep mysteries of understanding the deep mystical understanding as a child i ops used to observe so much stupidity going around and the children have to learn these as legacy each child wants answers to his questions according to his understanding at that moment however the elders and the parents all inclusive give answers according to their understanding or evade by giving fairy tale answers as a child i used to see so much stupidity i did not know albert einstein's statement then this i came to know much later albert made a significant statement that stands true beyond time and space albert einstein remarked two things are infinite the universe and human stupidity of the two we are not sure of the first but we are sure of the second this is a significant statement so true i have seen people touching the feet of those who have renounced money and such a person is considered a sage he is thought to be sage because he has renounced the valuables he is thought to be sage because he has renounced the valuables and all prosperity and that needs courage and guts if 
that man is right to renounce all his money at least stop worshipping money or its embodiment goddess lakshmi hindu goddess lakshmi symbolizes inner prosperity which comes when inner pull of grace far exceeds the gravitational pull of earth it does not symbolize money but inner prosperity but we have eyes of the outer so we can see money we can see the outer prosperity a very big mansion like house a good job plenty bank balance and things like that i have heard a boy once told his girlfriend that i want to share with you everything girl told him so let us start sharing with your bank balance first the boy want to share everything with the girl the girl asked him to begin with sharing the bank balance hindu goddess symbolizes inner prosperity which comes when the gravitational pull of grace far exceeds the gravitational pull of earth this is inner wealth when you are no more attached to the outer prosperity you are pulled towards the inner realm then outer prosperity wealth etc becomes meaningless in front of the inner treasures this is the way this is the understanding of the masters no one answers such questions and more so this way renouncing money luxury etc is not important what actually is needed is the sense of attachment that has to be renounced one can possess all prosperity and yet be unattached king janak the father of sita in the hindu epic ramayana is the example of one who is amidst prosperity but his innerness is not touched by prosperity there is incident in the life of hazrat ubaidullah arar father was king when he came to his master his father allowed him to go and seek the spiritual journey but he said that you are my son you have to remember that you have responsibility towards me as well so when i need you you have to come back while he was with his master the message came that his father passed away and he has left a message that he has to come and take care of the kingdom ubaidullah told his master that i have no interest in kingdom the master said when you have no interest in kingdom you are not attached only then you can take care of the kingdom go and take care of the kingdom tapant ubad started taking care of the kingdom he will spend his time in the kingly splendor and afterwards when the work is over he will retire into his solitary hut with meager facilities that is the life of a monastic it happened one day some of his fellow disciples who came to hazrat yaqub charki who was the master of ubaidullah that if there is any one who is amidst the prosperity and yet is still is not attached so the master said yes there is your one of your fellow disciple ubaidullah he is the king in ahrar go to him when these fellow disciples came to the city of city where ubaidullah was the king he has to pass through the stable where the place where horses and his animals were kept he saw the pegs that were 
needed to tie the horses horse their ropes were made of gold and silver a thought it came to their mind what kind of recluse he might be when even the pegs to tie the horses ropes is of gold and silver the people came inside they were welcome given the kingly splendor when they sat for meditation the master rubaidullah realized that there is something blocking the flow of energy he looked at those people and said look at the heart of this humble servant do you see the impression of that gold and silver pegs that you saw in my palace and then the people people realize that he was totally non attached one can be amidst the prosperity but the sense of attachment may not be. if the sense of attachment to that it may be that you may have a old wretched car but you have a sense of attachment to it you may have a mercedes benz or any other big car and you may not have attachment to it you may be amidst amidst the prosperity but remain non attached only this much 